prisoner's solution outside love. I call this piece Accident, Two People Once Removed. Names and places have been changed to protect the innocent. Any similarity is purely an accident. We argued. You hurt me and I wanted to hurt you back. I couldn't stand the thought that you could just sleep so easily, so I left. I'm cruising the highway now, that uninterrupted and endless mile being shown on the TV screen through which I view this road. Immediate programming, they claim. Reality-based reruns we get, rehashed so seamlessly, it's like breathing. You only notice when you stop. Driving keeps my mind off us. The asphalt unfolds. Resolution isn't bad today, and I can even see the event horizon. But because I've seen this particular show so many times, the accident is no surprise. Now I see an accident. Two cars have collided head-on in a smoking sculpture of metal and heat. The lighting's well done. Lots of deep indigo, red-rich purples offset by flickers of pale yellow light emanating from blow torches. Scalper's hand shuffling tickets since the show sold out months ago, and uniformed personnel ticketing motorists for rubbernecking as they swerve by. You see, no one gets to look free. Because of the convincing lighting and staging, the metal sculpture is, after all, in the middle of the road, I stop and purchase a ticket. I feel a light breeze and a flicker of deja vu. I peer through a cracked and misty window. The driver's pants are down while his possibly female companion's head is buried somewhere beneath the shaft of the steering wheel, the steering wheel on which he is impaled. It is difficult to see where the one car begins and the other ends. It is impossible to know what is happening in that other car. There is, however, a trickle of blood oozing from a buckled side door. I follow that trickle back through the barely parted legs of a security officer stationed there by the studio to prevent us from seeing the next installment. Flash bulbs pop, illuminating my distorted face in shattered glass. I sign a release and then wonder, have I been given a release to sign? Now there's a hush from the audience. Another fire truck arrives and a metal animal replete with mounted camera, powerful jaws and serrated teeth steps down and begins to chew on the installation. The possibility exists that inside that still smoking, still hissing, mangled mess, there might still be someone alive. That's why no one leaves. Then there's a momentary lapse. Rule number one, unless directed to do so, never ever look into the camera eye. The driver, whose heart must be somewhere behind him, steering wheel still attached, looks up for a split second and our eyes meet. His gaze is full of sadness and despair. He realizes that when this production is over, he too will have to return somewhere. He will sit in the prop room he calls home, sleepless, staring at a hollow plastic telephone, rubbing his chest gently, imagining some remembered pain. Remembering some imagined pain. He will realize that someone is asleep in the bed next to him and her body will rise and fall. I feel uncomfortable and I turn around. A woman that looks like you smiles nervously the accident, the, the accident woke me up. I think I saw it happening. I live over there, see, in that house. She points out into the blackness. I think I saw it happening. I'm so sorry. I place my arms around her and hold her warmth close to me. I'm looking over her shoulder into the darkness, squinting for any kind of representation that could possibly be my house. I bend slightly and I kiss her quivering lip. She averts my gaze. It's going to be okay, I murmur, and then wonder whether I was paid to say that. Suddenly, everyone's gone, and you and I, we're alone. I'm holding my breath. I'm dreaming. 
In my dream, I have my tongue inside you, and I can taste your every thought. And every time you contract, I can smell, hear, feel, I can taste you. When all your thoughts make one complete thought, we are a crescendo, an accident, a waterfall rising. And when I open my eyes, for the briefest of moments, I'm you. And I see, I saw me, and I realized that I was still sleeping, drowning, a line between awake and a dream, just as blurred, just as fragile as the line between you and me. Maybe 